they go doing me now. I'm still a talk of the town. Running the scissors, I'm hooking them down. We turn the spots in the frowns. Can't hop out, then we clearing the crowd. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Brianna Imani, and you're tuned in to another Talk of the Town interview. And let them know who we got in the building today. Big China. Not the little one. Period. Coming to New York from Philly. How you feeling, girl? Good. Good. Just All right. I love the vibe. I was telling you earlier, like, I love when we have guests from out of the town because I love hearing, like, what it is that you've been doing right. since you've been in the city. So, talk to us a little bit about, like, what you've been doing so far. So I'm doing a press, two-day press. Mm -hmm. Get my face out there and people to know me. Period. Period. Okay, so what we're going to do to do a little icebreaker, we're going to play a game. Okay. Two truths and a lie. Okay. You know how that go? Yeah. All right. All right. So I'm going to let you think for a second about your what your two truths and a lie is going to be. And I'm going to try to guess it to see. Okay. If I can help it. Okay. I put her on the spot, y'all. So, <laughs> okay. are you ready? Go ahead. All right. I don't like rapping. Mm -hmm. um, my mom get on my nerves. <laughs> <laughs> don't they all? <laughs> and I love lip gloss. Well, girl, you made this very easy because. <laughs> I was going to stop you before you even got to the second one. Because I know you don't hate rapping, girl. <laughs> Not the way that you be hitting them bars. <laughs> no way. So I feel like you took the easy route. But okay. Oh, your mom get on your nerves nothing. and you love lip gloss. All right. <laughs> so let's get into it. I know you from Philly, Philadelphia, born and raised. Or yeah, yeah. Yes. All right. So talk to us a little bit about that. What was it like growing up in Philly? Um, um, treacherous. Treacherous? Yeah. How treacherous did it get? Like, you from what part of Philly? South Philly. South Philly. But my mom was North Philly, so I was back and forth. Both sides. Okay. So, what was you doing? Like, what was the day-to-day? -day? Because you said it was real treacherous, so. Day-to-day, -day, rumbling every day. Every day I come outside, rumble. Oh, you was giving baddies? <laughs> she was, was giving, giving baddies before giving, You say something about my grandma, anybody. You left. was on Tommy. You was on I'm go. I'm knocking at people's doors. Y'all could jump me in all that. Oh, yeah. Well, girl, I heard some things about you. Oh, I'm my a, God. I'm not going to lie. I don't know if you want to talk about it, but yeah, girl, I heard how you used to get down. Yeah. And how you used to knock them out. Yeah, I had to. Mm, they used about to. that life. Mm -hmm. So, tell me, like, what was it that got you into making music because you started making music like fairly recently yeah. i would say so what was it that um started this journey for you my brother mm -hmm. my brother kept on asking me the rap he kept on asking me kept on kept on kept on asking me and i'm just like no mm -hmm. i and, don't want to be a rapper and what i thought was so interesting because i i heard you talk about that before and i think it's so funny how something that started off as like a bet wound up like kicking off right. your career this way so how what was it though that your brother saw in you that made him want to push you towards making music? I feel music? like I, I always used to be with the boys and they just like really like I was the person they talked to like they called talk to cuz I'm just like I was they felt like I was the realest one like mm -hmm. um but I felt like that's what it was. He felt like my life was real. He felt like I was real. Cuz you yeah. kept on saying that. I'm like why do you want me to rap? Right. And it was just cause I'm you, like, you know how I mean people I don't afford, they don't like me. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, that's gonna make them love you. Yeah, and I feel like, you know, you be talking some real shit. I think that, yeah. you know, it's very interesting because I feel like sometimes just because, not even sometimes, I feel like just because you're a real person don't mean that you can make real music or that right. you have a creative sound. So right. I think it's interesting that your brother was able to tap into something that you had even though right. it wasn't something you were already dabbling exactly. with right. and like push you towards push actually towards taking it seriously but it's, what's crazy is i wasn't still gonna do it but when he passed away i felt like i had to do it mm -hmm. and you continue with his legacy because yes. i'm sure that's what he really I, wanted you to do and i love that so let me know like what was the first time that you ever stepped in a booth what was that like because um it was fun i, okay. I did it with them on a we was just in the studio. I used to go with the boys to the studio because everybody from like my block used to really rap. Mm -hmm. um, where I used to be on Kowalski. They used to always rap 
And I used to pay for studio time because I believed in my friends. Like, oh, I used to help them. Like, what's up? We going to the studio today? I got some money for y'all. Like, you uh-huh. know what I mean? And we used to go to the studio, and then they was like, see, well, you might as well hop in the booth, because my name used to be C-Roll. Oh, I know. When I was a- <laughs> <laughs> when I used to fight, they used to call me C-Roll, because that was my mom name. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, hop in the booth. And then we just started playing around. We made, um, you ever heard of Exchange, Bison Tula? Bison, of course, yeah. We did that song over, and then me, him, and T.A. did a song, and then we had a show, and they got high as shit, and I had to fight both of them. I, was, I, I remember hearing you talk about that. <laughs> they got high as shit. And I'm like, why y'all so high? Like, we can't even do the show. I had on one shoe. I came outside and fought both of them. <laughs> and we wasn't speaking for weeks. And then TA reached out to me like, I'm sorry. Uh-huh. And then like a couple weeks later, he passed. So, and that's that's such a funny memory. Right. <laughs> I was so mad. I feel like not only is it like something funny to think about, but it also shows the dynamic of your relationship. Right. Um, so how do you feel about being on stage like under the influence? Do you drink, smoke? No. No, neither one. I, I drink like occasionally. Okay. I'm not a drinker. Okay, you're not I'm a drinker. Too turned up. You smoke? Vape. You vape. What's that like? What's tea with vaping? I feel like everybody be vaping down there. I don't know. It's addictive. Is it? It is. Mm. I, I my, saw you with your little I vape my a couple sleep. minutes ago. Like this. Not in your sleep, girl. <laughs> we gonna turn this from an interview to an intervention because I don't know about vaping in your sleep. <laughs> it's your crazy, sleep, girl. That's crazy. Um, so, um, if you weren't doing music though, what do you think that you would be doing right now? Um. I don't know. I do a lot. What I, else do you like to do? I like, um, I probably would have been a boxer. Like your mom? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I probably would have, but they probably would have tired me out too. Um, I'm about to open a restaurant, so. Oh, period. Yeah. Okay, so you be period. cooking, you be chefing Yeah, I be cooking pie. my asshole. What's your favorite thing to make? What's your favorite huh? thing to make? Hmm, probably like stuffed salmon. Okay. So you be cooking for your niggas or the people that you date? I don't, I don't know what your first My nigga. You be cooking for your nigga? It, it, yeah. How, how how long does it take for you to cook for a nigga? Because this is an ongoing conversation right now. I ain't cooking for anybody. Not everybody. No? It's not giving everybody. It's not giving you got to earn that. Yeah. Okay. And they you part. making a stuffed salmon or you got another go-to? <laughs> um, some people could get fried chicken. Oh. <laughs> You know what Mona said about frying chicken. <laughs> Listen. All right. So in terms of Philly, though, do you feel like you get support from your city? Um, For the most part, yeah. But I feel like everybody trying to bust UEs. They trying to bust UEs? Like they trying yeah, to spin like, the block? They trying to spin the block real bad. Oh. So it's like they, they know I'm how hip I am. Like y'all should have been there. So like, it's given back then they didn't want me. Now I'm hot. They all want me. It's given mm. fake happy. Yeah. Mm. But they ain't got no choice because they already know how I was gonna come. Right. So okay. So then how do you determine? Because you said fake happy. How do you know when somebody's genuinely supporting you because they really want to see you win versus I'm like a real big energy person. Mm-hmm. So I feel it. Like when motherfuckers come around, me, I love you, I miss you. I'd be like, Yeah, okay. <laughs> you fake shit. Right. Like you ain't got called me sis. My name China. Right. Like, but it's, I know when people are genuine. Like, you just see it all in their face. Uh-huh. Like they whole body language. Like, yeah. damn, sis, you really that fake. But I was gonna lie. <laughs> real, real, real. So is it like because I okay. Take two. Growing up, were you like popular? Like were people genuinely gravitating towards yep. you? Yeah. Yep. So it, you kinda... I used to have so many people ask me to like sign money really yeah sign Sign money money, sign pictures my cousins used to make me sign pictures of me when i was a baby because they knew i was gonna they said i was gonna be something they didn't know what i was gonna be but they knew i was gonna be something so i guess it makes sense why your brother would push you towards music because you got the vibe you got the look you already had the popularity it was like and you was already speaking real shit so i guess it was like the perfect combination to put it together yeah interesting so how do you feel about like accessibility and like being in your hood you still hang out where you grew up no no I don't, I, I mean, I stop by sometimes, but 
it ain't a drone for me. I got PTSD. Mm. <laughs> like That's your my friends is passing away left and right. My girlfriend just passed away a couple I'm months sorry. ago, so they really. Mm -mm. I don't even hang around nobody. Mm. So, with to and talking about like losses, especially like back home and when they're very personal to you, mm -hmm. does do you use that as like motivation? Like, how does it translate into like the grind and the hustle when it comes? To it make me go harder. It make me think about me. When I say I'm stopping, I can't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think about them a lot. And so, do you think that you will always be grounded? Because I know you just brought up PTSD. Do you think that you would still be grounded in Philly after your career takes off? You would still make? No. No, I'm ready to go. You ready to go ready. and not look back? I mean, or look back. about not looking back. I could come back and see my peoples because I'm about to have a business down there. And you know you got to start where you came from. Mm -hmm. Where would you go? Mm. Top three places. Top three places. LA, um, Houston, or Atlanta. I knew you was gonna say that. <laughs> Those like the top three hot spots. Right. Because you can still be outside, you can still be turned, yes. but on the music tip, right. people still working music over there. Yeah. Right. Okay, cool. So now speaking of music and bringing it back to Philly a little bit, have you seen the conversations that's going on right now with DJ Drama saying that Dreams and Nightmares isn't the Philly anthem no more, and now it's I Just Want to Rock? No, I you haven't seen see that? that, but yes. I, I feel like that is, though. You feel like I Just Want to Rock is the Philly anthem now? Yeah, because of what's going on in the culture right now. That's interesting. You see, the culture is that's what it is right now. The hips. Yeah, it's giving all that. See, <laughs> I guess because you're from Philly, I can't really debate with you too much on that. <laughs> but to me personally, like I really used to pray for times like this, not to rhyme like this, but I feel like <laughs> the like, I'm sorry, but dreams and nightmares really just does something to it me. Do. It, it do something to me spot, too. I don't care where I I'm feel at. I like that's the I'm hood doing. anthem. Like that's the hard anthem. Mm -hmm. But I feel like for the, I don't know. I just think for the culture right now, like where we at right now. Mm -hmm on the music hot tip because mm -hmm. that's what they on okay so you think that an anthem for a city is based on something that reflects the culture in the present time yes that's interesting okay yeah because well meek if you watching this dreams and nightmares will forever be my anthem because like i said it don't matter where i'm at what i'm it, doing it'd be mine too but i just think that's what they're gonna pick yeah I just, it's so much pain and struggle yeah, and hustle behind it. That's but my joint too. Speaking of anthems, you just dropped Say Song. Yes, yeah, Say Shit Song. Going up. Real yeah. lit. You got the visuals <laughs> popping. So talk to me a little bit about that. Like, how has the song been received so far? They've opinion? been doing really good. We almost had 300K in three weeks. Mm -hmm. So I'm mm -hmm. pushing it real hard. And it's going to fuck a bit. It's definitely yeah, going up. I feel like it set the tone for the year for sure. Yeah. The visuals was fire. Thank you. So walk me through those two. Like, okay, first let's walk through the song. When you made, was making the song, do you have visuals in mind already? Or does that come after? It comes after the beat. It comes after the beat. That's interesting. <laughs> okay. So let's talk through it. So you got the beat. You right before the beat, after the beat. I get in the studio. I get the beat made right in front of me. Oh. And then you come up with the song in the studio. I come See? up with the hook. Well, I, or I get um, Jake or Jerry, which is producers on our label. Mm -hmm. I get them to help me with melody or anything with the hook. Okay. I feel like hook is make the song. Right. Yeah. Speaking of a hook. See, okay. Sorry, because because you saying things that's making my mind turn because right now it's a big conversation, at least in New York, mm -hmm. a big conversation with Lola and Billy. Don't play with it. Don't play with it. Don't play with it. Yeah. I know you know that song. Yes. Um, and a lot of people are having this debate over the song and its popularity, the hook versus like Billy's bars because she was really spitting. But Ooh, some Billy. Ooh, that's tea. Um, <laughs> remember the girl that's on the song. She's on the song. With her. Okay, yeah. I heard. Okay, I know it, but I heard. I know who's. I don't know her, but I seen it. Yeah. Okay. So, so Billy did her did her thing on the she track did. for sure. Like yeah. I personally fuck with her verse. And I everything. went on her page too. I listened to her a couple times, but I yeah. never. I, I don't know why the name. Yeah, tap tap in with Billy because she's definitely yeah, she's fire. Her. I she, like her. She got bars, but a lot of people were saying that they knew the song because of the hook. So I think it's very interesting that you said That's that the exactly hook what is, is what makes the song yes. because it's really, a really strong important. Hook makes the 
They don't even care what you say in the verses. Yeah. And that's Little it's, it's crazy that that's where we at now. I think it's the attention span. Yes. I think it's the exactly attention span. It is. And then it's like a lot of people not creative. Mm -hmm. People are like people tap into people that's very creative, like Beyonce. Like she's creative. She she comes up with all her stuff. Like, mm -hmm. you know, Rihanna, mm -hmm. they like creators. Mm -hmm. And that's where I'm going at with it. Like I have to be, it has to be creative. It's not, it can't be no. Right. We're not even giving it. We're not doing no, um, no. Not no regular, regular shit. Um, no, we got to go extra. So now that leads us into our visuals mm -hmm. because. You actually do a really good job with visuals. Not Thank only you. just on Say Something, but like even like you really get creative with like the freak show visual, the Simon Says visual. Mm -hmm. You had the different colors okay, there. You yeah, no, I'm saying yeah. no, you definitely do your thing when it comes to those. Like Thank you. and um it was another one that you did, um, the paper. Paper on, paper on me. me. And, and I did you, the press conference. Yeah, it's yes. like you really be getting very creative <laughs> with the you. visuals. So how does that work? Do you come up with those with mm -hmm. those ideas? You I do come up with everything. Oh wow! So how? Okay, so you know what you want it to look like. Do you have a team that you consult yes, with? Yes, I have a team. BMR. Period. We mm -hmm. have BMR Productions. BMR. Everything. So everything in house. I love that. So we got content days, and we do our content every week, so we could drop and stay consistent. Because mm -hmm. once you consistent, they can't deny you. So Especially how? If it's hot. That part. So how important do you think it is to have a team behind you, working with you through this process? You need a team. You can't do it by yourself at all. Mm -hmm. If you think you can do it by yourself, you're crazy. So what would you say is like, maybe like one to three things that you can say matter of factly that your team has really helped you with that you think otherwise you don't know, like Structure. if it would have worked yourself out. Ugh. It's a whole Discipline, lot, a whole lot of peace mm -hmm. of mind. Mm hmm it's a lot of stuff that you don't really have to worry about when you, you have don't a team. at all. Like you, you just come in the studio and you happy. Mm -hmm. that's, I feel like you should be happy in the studio because that's where you create. Mm -hmm. So what's the vibe like in the studio when you in there? I got my own studio, so it's giving pink vibes. Okay, artsy vibes. You okay. Know? <laughs> see, I, I, you give that. I wish the camera could see your shoe. I don't know if they could see the shoes, but you definitely give girly, like real, like artsy, creative. So, thank you. That's that's interesting. So with paper on me, like we said, you did the little press mm -hmm. questions in the beginning, and there was a couple things that I really wonder. Like, are these things that people really be asking you? Yes. A lot of bitches ask me, they is do? your ass fake? They do? Yes. See, I feel like Girls that's... come past and like, grab my ass. And I'm like, why the fuck you just grab my ass? You don't even know me. Like, <laughs> Yeah, I feel like that's real bold. Because no, I, I feel like it's one Philly. thing... Philly, them bitches okay, is Okay, it's a Philly thing. No, real Because I'm like, I feel like it's one thing they to speculate. They shit. That's what it is. They gay as shit. Can you say gay? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. I ain't supposed to say gay. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, but how do you how do you feel about that though? Because that's something that I think has also been made very like no, it's been very normalized in our culture. I think when we out partying, we out clubbing, even like walking down the street, yeah, you know, they just want to they dance, touch and touch. grab and stuff. So you you don't like that? It ain't even that I don't like that. Like speak or something. Like oh wait, hold on. So you saying that? It's people that won't say anything to you and just and come up to you come and grab up your to ass. Me like, yeah, it's fat. Oh, Philly on a I'm different like, type of time. Damn, man. you really on some turned out shit. <laughs> turned the fuck out, shorty. Like, no. And then, like, I'm like, this is how I talk. Like, yeah. so people probably think I'm gay. But, like, I'm the way I talk, I'm hard. I feel like. You know what? Like, Krishan. Krishan is somebody that's hard, and she talk hard, but she doesn't give me gay. It's just like, you grew well, up in Baltimore. Dress, like, and boyish. She... Yeah. So okay. They I probably know. just think. Fuck them. <laughs> Period. Um, so, um, but when it comes down to being sexualized and stuff, do you feel like in this industry, that's something that comes with it? Have you Yeah, they think that? all of us are. Yeah? Yeah. I had a big, I had a big artist tell me that, like, one of the biggest artists what? from Philly. Tell you what. That they think we all gay. All the artists. Oh, wait. Hold on. All, the girl, that's not all the girl artists. Really? That's what she told me. Why? I don't know. But, like, when it comes to men, like, 
when I say like sexualize, do you feel like men will sexualize you as an artist too, or like as a woman in general? They probably do. If you saying probably, that. that's actually good because that means you haven't experienced it yet. Right. So that's a, a good right. sign, I guess. <laughs> Okay, so then now when it comes to your image, how important is your image to you? Because, you know, everything is everything. Yes. Okay. If you had to describe your style in three words, how would you describe it? Extra, extra. We all about it. That was about seven. <laughs> but... <laughs> <laughs> no, extra. So you say extra. So what's like a fit essential for you? Like what's something you have to have? Don't say lip gloss because you said it already. Something I have to have. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Chanel sneaks, Chanel bag. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Fair part. I gotta have jewelry on. Mm -hmm. I love jewelry. Mm -hmm. Okay. And do you, so you think image is important as an artist, do especially you, for a woman. I feel like men, you could get up and go. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like that adds a little pressure? No, no, not to you. I mean, but just in general. I, I probably yeah yeah yeah. I would think so. I think it's really interesting, though, that men don't really got to do too much. But women, we got to have the look. We got to have the fit. They could fit. be ugly and everything. Because I feel like there's so much, like, untapped talent. I feel like there's a lot of women specifically who have a lot of talent. And just because they don't have that look or they mm -hmm. don't have that swag, they don't pop as quickly. But I feel like the ones that don't have that look is the ones that pop. You think so? Yes. Hmm. I don't you even don't see wanna... what's going on. I don't want to put you on the spot, but I'm so curious. <laughs> <laughs> These new artists, what? The These, new ones that's just popping off, like... <laughs> I feel like the new artist that's popping off got something. Like, Lola even, like... is pretty. I like, think... But you, I'm saying, like, I don't know. Like, in New York, even, like, I feel like the girls that's popping right now, even, like, the Kenzos, the Shawnees, the Devins, like, I feel like everybody has, like, a look. Something to them. Yeah, down here, but I don't know. No, <laughs> down here. <laughs> in Philly, you don't give. Yeah. So who's the bad bitches in Philly? Who's the artist that's, like, doing shit that um, we should be tapping into? We got into? Cake Lizzy. We got Mecca. We got Bumblebee. We got Tierra Wick. Oh, yeah. I love Tierra Wick. Yeah, and that's, yeah, I'm tapping that's my girl. Um... We got a lot of people. Shea Moore, me and her gonna do a feature tomorrow. Mm. Um, you said that Tierra Wack is your girl. Y'all both very, very creative. So I yeah. would love to see y'all working together. How did that that um connection come about? Um, I think it was Instagram. Mm -hmm. But then no, yeah, it was Instagram. She invited me to her show. She got me tickets. I she sent me. I was backstage with her. Rico Nasty. Mm. All the big artists was the XXL. In okay, New York. okay. She sent mm -hmm. me here, we, and then we just busted up and vibe. And then ever since then we was talking. Then one day I had to do the come up show. This is when I first started rapping for real. I had to do the come up show, and she rode. To, she came. She came to my house in the Impala, so nobody wouldn't know it was oh, her. Wow. And parked in front of my door and told uh -huh. me, "Don't be scared." And like, was just like, because <laughs> I was scared. Yeah, I didn't want to do it. I did not want to do it. She pushed you to do it. She pushed me to do it. See, I like I like that because I feel like it's one thing to have a team of people that are pushing you to go towards like right. your craft, but it's another to have somebody who's in the industry that really sees something in yeah. you too. And really she crazy, you. yo. She is, I bet she's crazy. I know that y'all yeah, talking about stories she's for days. Because just based on like the personality, the vibes that I get from you, and then what I see yes. from Tierra, I could imagine. <laughs> I know y'all be having the time. I know that y'all be having bad fun. Um. So how, like, when it comes to your sound now, you have a sound that I think is very unique because you do, like, the little, like, soft voice type of thing. But it's, like, raspy. But you really, bit. like, talking your shit. And then sometimes, like, you real hard with it, too. Yeah. How did you, like, find your sound? Like, how would you say you settled into the way you sound now? Um, I kept on playing with my voices because I felt like I, I was sounding, like, the same. Mm. And I had stopped for a little while rapping. I mm -hmm. lost my page. I had to start I all over. I think that was like, what, 2019? Was it? Mm. It was later than that? No, last year. I just oh, lost shit. my page. Oh, shit. I, so, yeah, I just built it back up. 
Okay. Yeah. Well, Shanti, you're doing a great job because I thought it was way longer than just no, last just year. Recently, I just got a new page. Oh shit! Well, shout out to you. <laughs> you, you, you I thought it was job, what's crazy is out. it, it, it kind of discouraged me a little bit. I was like, I'm about to be done with this. I don't feel like this. Instagram getting everybody though. So that means you got caught like when everybody I was, was getting asleep. caught because it was a lot of people who I lost their pages. I'm sure you shit. were. <laughs> so how did you? Okay, because hold on, we get we getting off track real quick. Okay, you built your sound how? Because we gonna come back to this. Okay, you built your sound by playing around with your voices and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. You said you lost your page. So when you came back, is that when you continue finding your sound, or did you have it down packed once you got back on the scene? I continue finding it. I just kept on making different types of music. Okay, I started singing. I started getting into that. Not you with the vocals. <laughs> okay. So you started singing. Now, would you say that when your page got taken down, because it sounded like you was getting a little discouraged when that happened. Yeah, because I had, you, what, I was at like 43K. So it was like, oh, I got to do this all over again. Over. My page yeah. got hacked like six different times. I was about to ask you that too. Like, what happened? Why did I don't do know. That? I was asleep. I think somebody did it. I know. Maybe hater. And now that I'm, <laughs> I ain't going to talk about it. We talk about it off camera. Because <laughs> I still want to know. Because I think I know who did it. <laughs> oh no that's definitely t because one of my friends one day was like send me that code that just came to your phone i can't get in my phone and i started putting two and two together i said yo you what you trying to get me like right. i was like oh yeah we done so and my- we've been friends for like since kids and like i gotta really be done with you now like that was what i was about to ask you my question is like so how do you be moving with them now oh we ain't moving and do they know why you moving that way Oh, we ain't got nothing to talk about to know. Oh, well, period. I guess if they tuned in, <laughs> if you know, you know. You know, you know. You <laughs> know how I am, you know. period. Oh, my gosh. So, we were talking about your sound. Do you think that sound is important to an artist? It, yes. Yeah. Because a lot of people sound alike. They yes. Try to, they try to go with other people's ways. Mm-hmm. And they try to recreate it. And it's not a good thing sometimes to do that. Mm-hmm. And, you know... <laughs> I keep talking about New York artists, but in thinking about what you just said, that's kind of what happened with like Pop and Dusty. I feel like sometimes when you have a certain type of voice that people hear a lot, right. instead of people listening to your music for what it is and they appreciating sound, what it is, it's like the the voice. Com- it comes with a comparison as opposed See, to just like. I just was talking about that the other day. Um, What's her name? Who? Um, The one from down here. I call- What's her name? We from down about here. She sound like Foxy Brown. Who sound like Fox? Well, you know who Lola is, so it can't be Lola. Malibu. Oh, Malibu. Okay. Not even, not even her rapping, her huh. just talking. She sounds like her. Huh. That's interesting. Cause I don't think I ever really like thought to make the comparison. In their that's sound. why Foxy goes so hard for her. Oh. Cause she see her and so much in her. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. Okay. Yes. So you think that's a good thing or a bad thing? Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad, because sometimes you can't reinvent it. Yeah. They was like. The it girls do you, of course. Do you think that people compare you to anybody? Um, a lot of people gave me Trina. Mm, the baddest. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm like freaky like Trina, but <laughs> you be talking that shit. Wait, no, wait, hold on, because what you people said, say I my like pussy. I ain't talking like about lot- no ISIS. Ah, you be talking that shit. Like don't, that. don't do that. Don't do that. Okay, so they say Trina. Because I was thinking, like, when I said that your sound is very, like, you give that, like, calm, raspy, you know, like, Callie mm-hmm. doing that, Enchanting is doing that. Mm-hmm. But I like that you add Somebody that Somebody said that to me the other day, too. About who Callie or Enchanting They is. said, you know how Callie came out and Enchanting, they got them voices, but yours is, like, soft and hard. hard. It is. That's crazy. Somebody just said that to me, like, a That's day. That's how true it is. <laughs> oh, <laughs> wait a minute. You just... That's how true it is. That's crazy. So, um, you also do a lot of freestyles, mm-hmm. and they really be dope. Do you have like a preference between like freestyling versus like sitting down and writing your shit out? Um, no, no. I just go how I feel that day, and sometimes I turn a song into a freestyle mm-hmm. if I know I ain't going to drop it or something. Okay, so was that the case with any of the ones that we had talked about before, like Simon Says? Paper no, on, they were. No, those well, was meant paper to be. on me was going to be a song, mm. but the beat. I like the way you did it though. Thank it you. worked. Sometimes yeah, it, it works, and I think also to what we were talking about before. But I'm gonna drop them all as singles. So now it's given that you teasing the people because <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna just drop them so they could just have a catalog. 
Okay. Yeah. I mean, good. Right. But like, damn, because we would, we probably would have been like wanted that. But I'm right. like, you give, you giving us something to, uh, you know, wait mm-hmm. for. Okay, fair enough. I'm gonna start probably dropping them this week. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So what's the what's the, what's the plan for? The, okay, we go we go. <laughs> I'm getting too ahead of myself. Okay. Yeah. So, um, how do you feel about collabs though? Because you do. Your freestyles, you do your singles. You have a couple collabs. Mm-hmm. How do you feel about them in general? Um, I love collabs, but I feel like when I first started rapping, I collabed with a lot of people. Mm-hmm. And I feel like now it's just like me for me to tap in with myself and make hits mm-hmm. by myself because like you will help so many people, like, but you need to get yourself out there. You're free. Like yeah. motherfuckers be like, fuck you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When it's time for them to do a favor for you or something like that, but mm-hmm. I ain't knowing that. You gotta put you first, Lucius. You putting yourself out there, Therefore. and then the collabs will come. I would say my favorite collab of yours is um, you did a song with Since ninety five. Is that what it is? Mm-hmm. Big three. Yes. First of all, you ate that verse up. <laughs> Thank you, you ate that verse. <laughs> Um, so you. I really gotta say you did your big one on that. Um, who are like other artists that you will want to work with? Um, Coyla Ray, Mulatto, Glorilla, okay. Rorty, mm-hmm. Meek, Black, um, Lola. Period. Period. You said black, so you really tapped into. So you I and we him. also he like too. one of my favorite artists. Me too. I really really love that. He like got Daniel. a meaning. To his music. So, will we be getting singing? <laughs> we getting well, singing him, China? We'll probably get, or like, we getting melodic. Nothing? Like, probably, like, a little melody. Okay, because we didn't gloss over the fact you said you got them vocals. So. Yes. Okay. That'll you be heard China from the block? Of course I did. That's Don't be cool by the rocks that I got. Yeah. Yes. You singing, but, like. Why well, I feel if you. If you want a song with black, I would want to I want to okay, hear a little, you. you know, a little more. Okay. Cuz you I got, got it songs in like that. Yeah, I feel you. So, now let's talk about you and being signed with a question mark cuz we're going to get into it. Mm-hmm. So, you are affiliated with BMR. Big Money Records. Yep. How did that come about and what's that situation? Like we started all together. Okay. So, we started going to the studio. They said they wanted to make a record label, mm-hmm. and we started it. Oh. And it's up. Okay. And that was that. All right. So now I see, since you've been in New York, you've been in the label meetings and all of that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. So what's the intention behind that? What is what is it that you're looking for? Partnership. Okay. So you would still be with BMR? Always. Wow. Well, love that. <laughs> love that. Two out of time. Be a family. Okay. Never, like, you feel me? Yeah. So what kind of things do you look for in a partner when it comes to going into these label meetings? Like, how do you know what it is that you're expecting for them to bring to the table? I mean, the only thing they could give me is probably marketing. I got everything. Okay. There's nothing they really could do. Okay. Okay. Marketing. So now, prior to those meetings, like, since you don't have a deal yet, what have you... Oh. No, go ahead. Yes. <laughs> what have you been doing to keep yourself out there and to like make people know who Big China is? I just keep on dropping every week, even if it's not a real song, so they can see me and I make it as creative as possible. Mm-hmm. So then they'd be like, "Damn, ain't nobody doing it like her." Mm-hmm. You feel know I me? Mean? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. So that I feel, I feel like that's pretty much it right now. And then me going like all around. Promoting my single. Mm-hmm. See, I'm the TikTok girl. I'm I TikTok on TikTok. I need to learn it more. <laughs> I definitely think that you um you would do well on TikTok. And I saw, I, you know, I I did a little snooping. I see you you be posting here and there. Yeah, on TikTok. I, I, I got get good at it. I'll be trying. For you, I could definitely see like get ready with me since you you know you got the style down. Okay, you did the like the sound in the booth like mm-hmm. it went from this to yeah, this. That's yeah. like that's cool. And I think like now we live in a time where like people like to see the personalities. So if okay, you got so one, give, give it that's to the what, people. That's what let them see it. That's what my cameraman was saying. Yeah, because you like. Your music is great, but I also think that your personality is great, too. Okay. So, that may also help people gravitate towards right. you. In the meantime, while you're waiting for, you know, the market and stuff to hit from the labels, mm-hmm. I think you got it in you for you to put yourself out there okay. right now, too. Yeah. Um, 
So something that I saw you say was the worst part about being famous. And this was a while back. You said the worst part about being famous was people coming up to your car. <laughs> like, Do people, people still be doing that? Yeah. Girl, I'll be all the way down the street. People be screaming my name. What? Yeah. See, how does that how does that feel? Because I can see pros and cons. Um Um, oh, the pros and cons. Um, I really like, I really love, I enjoy it, but mm -hmm. it's just like when people just walk up and stuff like that, you got to be cautious because our, our city is just so like yeah. treacherous, like right. my, motherfuckers killing you for just being you or you trying to come up and mm -hmm. you like looking like something. Right, right, right. So what's the craziest experience that you've had with like a fan or just like a public interaction? Oh, a fan asked me to have a threesome. <laughs> okay, so two questions. <laughs> it was a guy or a girl? A girl. I had to put my hands on her. It was. Oh, wait. <laughs> wait. Because I told For her. Asking? I told her no. It was the way she did. I told her no. I, don't, I what would make you think I would like ever? That was real bold. Bro, but I was like, what would you? What would make you think I would ever do right. something like that? Like I don't even. She just kept on talking about it, kept on talking. I'm like, yo, I don't right. get into See, that. Yeah, and then she just like burning me out still. And I'm like, yo, just get away from me. Oh, she brought the sea raw out that she day. Walk, she walked me outside and everything. I'm like, yo. What? Oh, yeah. She was really on the sea. I feel like that's too much. No yeah. means no. Sit her right it's on the never Chinese step. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Okay, so in the not in the realm of threesomes, but since we talking about like that life, what's your dating life looking like, sis? What's it giving? It's giving. It's giving. It's giving life. Okay, hot. <laughs> <laughs> it's giving life, whatever that means. <laughs> How do you handle like dating? Um, being in the industry because I feel like a lot of times it's hard to really tell like what we were talking about before when it comes mm -hmm. to like fake fans or like people fake being happy for you. I think it's also hard to tell as you're coming up, like who's really in it because they actually interested versus right. like, nigga, you just want me because I'm lit right now. Right. So how do you navigate the dating? As um, I don't even, I just worry about my career. I ain't even going to oh. lie to you. Okay. Okay. Nighttime when I'm home or something like, you know, but I, I just worry about my career. You keeping it cute, and I love that. <laughs> okay, yeah. I'm gonna <laughs> let you rock with that. So, um, what is like the plan for this year? I see that you have a movie coming up that you're starring in. Yes, that seems to be very dull. Yes. So, talk to us a little bit about that. Is that something that you're looking to get into more? Yeah, I do want to get into that more. I'm trying to get on BMF. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um. I did that movie. We it it, it, it aired, um the, the premiere ninth. is March 9th. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's called A Body to Kill For. And the girl name in the movie name is China, and my name is really China. Okay. Uh-huh. And um it's about this girl from North Philly, and she just run into the wrong men. Is like basically watch who you deal with. Mm -hmm. So where can we find it? Let the people know just in case. It's they gonna don't be know. on Tubi and Amazon. Um we rented out the King of Pressure Mall, uh, well, the movie theater mm -hmm. in Philadelphia. And we're going to have a red carpet event. Oh, that's fire. Yeah. So you said that you want to do something like you want to be in BMS. Yes, I'm trying to be on the show. Okay, we're we going to speak it into existence. Yes. Okay, this is the year manifestation. Yes. So BMF, like what I was like, what kind of things would you, would you do a reality TV show? Yeah, I would. You would? Mm-hmm. What kind? Would it be like a dating? Would it be a baddies? Like, baddies. It would be a baddies. Because I wish the bitches would. Yo, I said it. <laughs> like I said, like, with the with shorty, with the threesome, nice they person. bringing out C Raw. They got to bring out, they not ready. That should be the bad. Oh, we I, feel like, I feel like it would give, though. It would give. I feel like it would give. It would be lit. Okay. So we got that on the TV front. And then on the music front, I know you said that you were going to keep dropping stuff. Mm -hmm. What else can we expect from you this year? Uh, just seeing my face more, everything I'm gonna be on it, you know, taking it to the top. I'm I'm trying to get a number one song mm -hmm, by okay. the, the end of this year. Big China, big pressure. Period. All right. Well, is there anything else that you wanna 
touch on, talk about before we wrap up, sis? Um, is a period <laughs> stream say something? Yeah, it's stream going say up. something. Shout out your socials. All my that. social Instagram. My Instagram is Big China, Big C H X N A. Mm-hmm. Instagram, YouTube. All that big China. Thank you for stopping bosses. I you. hope you enjoy the rest of your time in New York. I enjoyed it. Thank and thanks you. for tuning in to Talk of the Town. Bye, Talk y'all. Of the town.